Hello. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's Mike. We are on the fifth day of the fourth week of the 40 Days to Personal Revolution series that I'm doing right now. This week's theme is restoration. And if you're just joining this class and you're not sure about what I'm talking about, check out the 40 Days to Personal Revolution book by Baron Baptiste. It's a program that I'm currently involved in. And I'm just creating this resource for people that are doing this program with me. Hit the thumbs up, comment below, and let me know that you're enjoying these practices. Or if you're catching this sometime in the future, because these programs go on all the time, just here to help support you getting onto your yoga mat. Okay, and for this week of restoration, and starting last Saturday, I'm going to do for the, the next couple Saturdays, the next few Saturdays here, yin yoga class for the Saturday class, okay? So this is gonna be an hour long today. We're gonna do more, like last week I called it yin-ish because it wasn't really truly yin. We're gonna, I'm gonna take this one a little bit more like a real yin class where there'll be just longer holds in the poses, um, slow it way down, there will be no flow, there will be no chaturangas, none of that kind of stuff, okay? Which I love and I think is amazing and it's really nice to find that balance of yin to that yang of the fire of power yoga. So we're gonna move through, um, the first few poses will be like this integration, like from uh, one of the classes we do in power yoga, but we're gonna slow them way down, take a little bit uh, different variation, a little bit more time. And just coming back to those principles of yin yoga, it's really finding your edge in the pose. So getting to a spot where you feel your body and experiencing the sensations and you kind of know something's happening, but not past that edge to where you're actually suffering or definitely not in pain in the pose, okay? And then the other principle is stillness, is really trying to remain still as best you can when you get into the posture. So not fidgeting around, not moving, other than like allowing that edge sometimes to deepen as you sit in a pose for a bit longer, your body might open up some space and offer you something new after a minute, a minute and a half in a pose. Breathing, okay, really important. And just allowing time and breath really to give your body access to that healing that happens when you hold the postures longer and aren't rushing through them so quickly, okay? And then always taking your time to come out and not rushing through the transition from one pose to the next. So that all being said, all the words, we're gonna start in child's pose. I'm gonna do a different variation of child's pose today than we normally do. So it's up to you. If this doesn't feel good, do your own um, variation. But I'm gonna take my knees together and I'm gonna come down onto my forehead with the arms back beside the body, okay? Palms facing up. And this allowing my body to rest into the pose right here. So breathing. And the breath of yin doesn't have to be so fiery. You don't have to be making it like an audible ujjayi breath like we do in power yoga. Nothing wrong with ujjayi if that's what, what helps you stay grounded, but it doesn't have to be so intense. It doesn't have to be so fiery, right? Kind of the opposite. Yang, power yoga, Hatha yoga, it's all about building some heat, some tapas. And yin is the opposite. It's a cool yoga. It's a cooling breath. You can even take it through your mouth with the mouth open slightly through the teeth will be more cooling. Just allow yourself to settle in. only done yin a little bit or maybe this might even be your first time attempting a yin class it's something that just getting takes getting used to i know it was my experience anyway if you're used to movement if you're a person that's come to this class from like my videos of power yoga then this will be really way out of your comfort zone right like i know i'm a power yogi at heart too I like the intensity, I like the heat, I like the strength building of a power practice. And there's something really important to be said about finding that balance, the yin and yang, siva, sukha, asana, strength and softness in the asanas, balance. Just allowing yourself to slow down and be still. Generous breath. this week of restoration it can really come in different ways i know like i did a power like a fire flow a couple days ago and that was like i love that way to restore like really like you know literally restoring in the fire in the heat challenging yourself getting like a fresh view of your body of the practice it's an option it's powerful 
Restoration in the stillness. Just allowing your body to sit in a pose to kind of pool that energy. Getting more into the joints, into the ligaments, the tendons. Less focus on the muscles, right? Like check in. Are you holding muscles you can let go of? Really relaxing with what is. It's all about yin, really, truly. Like allowing yourself to relax into the pose. Not holding tension, not holding resistance. Just softening. Surrendering to the experience, to the sensations, and breathing through them. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Take a few more. We'll move into downward facing dog. Hands out in front of you. Lift your hips up and back. Take your time, yeah? Really take your time in the transitions. Be intentional in your foundation here of your hands and your feet. Check in. A different experience of down dog than using all the muscles, like hugging muscles to bone. Do, don't like the muscles that need a work to keep you in this posture. Use those. And where can you soften? Where can you relax into the pose? Let your chest melt closer to the floor. Softening of the knees, softening of the elbows. Less muscles working. It's kind of hanging out. Melting into it. Deep breaths. First time I did yin, I went crazy. I'm not gonna lie, that's my truth. <laughs> it was power yoga all the way. And then that first yin class, it was a new experience for me. I definitely suffered through it because I wasn't really aware of the benefits or the kind of mindset shift that's required to switch over to a yin from a yang experience of yoga. And they're both always present. Sometimes that young, that fire can be in your mind, right? When you're in the stillness, when you get agitated, antsy, that whole like, what's the point? I want to get a workout. I want to sweat. Like all of that's great stuff. How often do you actually allow yourself to be still? Just to be in the moment without needing to rush to the next thing. belief that you can't be still or there's no point in meditation and stillness and ease, presence. Get that out of the way. The laws of transformation in week four of this program are relax with what is, which is just so fitting for yin. And remove the rocks. Get the rocks. Get the blockages, the mindset limitations out of the way that prevent you from actually being present. Just being in a more contemplative state, present, the body, dialed into the breath, allowing a different experience of the poses when you're there longer, the compression of the joints, it's what you want. The tendons, the ligaments, all getting the workout in this kind of a practice. Three more breaths. Inhale. 
exhale. Take a breath in. Empty it out. Come up onto your toes, gently step to the top of your mat. Dangling pose, ragdoll, same pose. It's here a bit longer than usual. So taking the same posture as ragdoll, okay? Interlacing hands or thumbs at the elbows, biceps, and just feet wide, wide as your hips. Let go of the upper body. Really do that, okay? So let go of the head, you're not holding it up. Big stretch through the neck happening. The weight of the head, gravity pulling it down, giving that stretch through the thoracic spine. A little work in the legs, right? The muscles of the legs have to work to keep you standing upright. Press the tailbone up. Just allow for the upper body to dangle down. And resisting that urge to bob around, to sway from side to side, really just allowing the upper body to hang here. Stillness and breath. Balance action in your practice. If you do power yoga all the time, taking a day of your week to get into stillness, and like you could do power right after this. It's yin yang, yeah, not yang yin. It's really the benefit of doing yin before the fire which might seem counterintuitive to the practice that we often do where it's all fiery and we end in some hip poses, but those aren't yin. Like there's a yin aspect to like a half pigeon and stuff. Those are yin poses. But a five or a 10 breath hold doesn't really get you into the experience of true yin where you're there holding, breathing, still. Just experiencing your body from a different perspective. Can you relax any more into this pose right here? Let go of any tension, any muscles that don't need to be working. Start breathing. Relax with what's there. Catch yourself agitated, wanting to fidget, wanting to get up and walk off your mat. Just you can, you can do that, right? That's an option. And are you able to relax with what's there? Relax into that agitation, breathe through it. Realize that it's all in your mind. Your body will thank you for a yin practice. Your mind might try to argue with that. As our mind often does argue with the body, and our mind does. Soften even more. Let's soften the knees, resting the chest on the thighs more. Upper body dangling down, no tension. Spread your 10 toes on the mat. Breathe in. Breathe out. Couple more breaths. Long inhale. Long exhale. One more right here. Hold. Plant your hands. Just gently step back. Come down onto your knees. 
lower all the way down to your belly. We're going to move into seal pose. So seal pose, hands out in front of your mat. It's kind of like cobra, only not quite as intense. So you're going to have your hands out in front of your mat. And I like to take the thumbs facing 12 o'clock. So imagine you're turning your hands out like a little bit more like seal flippers, okay? So thumbs at 12 o'clock. And then it's a gentle lift through a back bend here. Toes pointed out behind you. Feel a little bit wider than your hips. And it doesn't have to be super intense, but if you feel like absolutely nothing, you can bring the hands a little bit closer. And if you really want a cobra, go for it. Just don't, we're going to be here a little bit longer, so don't like force your back into anything that it's going to, you know, that edge. It's a place you can stay. Breathe through. Just let, you can keep the head up if that feels better to you. I like to just allow my head to roll forward, get that big stretch through the neck and the thoracic. Again, check in. Some muscles are working in these postures to hold you into them, but like there doesn't have to be extra muscles. Allow the legs to soften completely. There's no need for like Uddiyana Bandha, no core engagement here, just a softening there. Let go of the tension in the neck. Let go of the tension in your mind. Breathe. Long breaths. Respiration. How often do you allow yourself Time. How often do you prioritize time for restoration? And it can be a power practice. That's not a bad thing. A different benefit from being still. Strengthening your mind when you allow yourself to sit in stillness. about five more breaths. You want to check in with your edge. You might be able to go a little bit further into it, come up a little higher with the back bend. Not forcing being here. Relax into the breath. Inhale and exhale. One more. As you exhale, come down onto your left cheek. Take your arms back beside you and just rest here for a moment. Just be still. Belly Shavasana is pausing.
Practice your arms. Half frog from here. So arms practice like they would be in a full frog pose. And then it's just going to be, we're starting on the left side here, okay? So taking the left knee out to the side. Half the body is in the expression of frog, okay? So you've got those 90 degree bends at the hip crease, at the knee, at the ankle, flexing the foot out to the left side. And then whatever cheek feels nice, you can just kind of rest your head. One cheek down. It's a really nice, gentle hip opener. Breathe into it. Relax with whatever shows up. Just listening to the physical body. Being present to it. Instead of being driven by your thoughts at all times. And the moment you want to fidget, the moment you want to come out of the pose, give up on the yin practice, like that's the moment where this work of the practice actually begins. Stillness, staying, just allowing time to pass without needing to do anything but breathe and be right here. restoration through stillness. Keep breathing. Intentional breaths. In the stillness where there's no vinyasa, no intense movements or intense, you know, fiery sensations. You might have some tightness in your hips. That could be showing up. There's more stillness when there's more space really getting into this work of removing the rocks, the mental barriers, the limiting beliefs, being really interested in what might pop up into your mind, curious about it, not resistant to it. Acknowledge that it's there, whatever might show up in your mind, relax with it. Working to move it out of the way so you can come back to the experience of presence, stillness. holding on to any tension, let it go. Stop focusing on muscles if you're working them, holding on to them, it's just a softening, a release. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. And 
we'll switch sides. Let's take your time. Again, don't rush in the transitions here. Straighten out the left leg. Arms stay captives, right knee out to the side, foot flexed. The knee in line with the hip, the ankle in line with the knee. Just letting go. It wasn't until I did a yin teacher's training that I started to find the situations in the practice. So again, I just acknowledge you if you're still here with me, if you haven't run yet. You might be a lover of yin, so this isn't even like applying to you, like just enjoy. For those power yoga preference kind of people out there, this is like a challenge. I get that and I acknowledge you for it. The benefits of yin are different than the benefits of yang yoga, the difference than the benefits of the fiery power practice. Really, you know, much more dramatic effect on flexibility in some cases. Literally like the stimulation of collagen production, synovial fluid to the joints to lubricate them, like a lot of stuff that happens when you stay in a hold. stillness, letting time do its work on the body. It doesn't get stimulated whenever you're going and holding for a few breaths and you're moving quickly and you know, all of that has its own benefit. It's not bad different. Different doesn't have to be bad unless you make that limiting belief prominent in your mind. Few more breaths here. Bring your chin to center. Now bring your elbows in underneath your shoulders for Sphinx Pose. No rushing, take your time. Palms and forearms flat down on the mat. Pay no fists, no prayer, like just allow the palms to ground. The more you pull the elbows back towards the hips and draw the chest through the arms, the more intensity there will be in this pose. There can be quite a bit of intensity in this pose. So just allowing your back to be the guide here. Find your edge though, you should feel some sensations happening. There's no pinching, no forcing. And again, a tall neck, if that's what feels good. I really like to just let the head roll forward. There can be a block under your forehead. I don't really use a block in yin, but if you have one and want to use it, that can be like an option as well. Restorative yoga uses a lot of props to take a lot of the pressure out of the poses or they just kind of like a really blissful experience without any tension in the body. And compression, some tension in the ligaments and the tendons actually is where a lot of the benefits of yin come from. So just allowing things to kind of hang out. So never if it causes pain or suffering or distraction, not too much distraction anyway. 
the distraction of the sensations as part of the work, allowing them. Remove the rocks with the distraction of the way when you're aware of it, and just relax into it. Take about 10 breaths. Let go if you can any more forms. Edge if it's moved. Slowly release out of the pose. You're going to extend your arms out into like a T. We're going to move into a shoulder roll. We'll take the left side first. So with your arm extended straight out beside you here, roll onto your left shoulder, your left hip. And options here, okay? So take your right hand out in front of you to start. You can just have your legs stacked. Head can be on the ground. If you really, if your neck feels like it needs support or block to help or a towel or anything there to give the neck some support. You can just start it again. So the palm flat on the mat, the right hand in front of you with the elbow facing the ceiling as support. If you want to deepen this a little bit more, you can bend the right knee and step your right foot behind your left knee. Take it a little deeper. If you want to deepen it even more, you can take your right hand onto your sacrum. That's going to just kind of put the weight behind you a bit more and deepen that twist. No forcing. This shouldn't be painful. Maybe uncomfortable, though, a little bit. And for the fullest kind of tension that you can put into the shoulder, you can cactus the left arm. I'm not capable of doing that in my body. I've got some tightness in my shoulders. But that left arm can take a 90 degree bend with the palm flat on the mat if you want to take it to the next level. It's very intense from my experience, but some people that might fit for you. And you just breathe. practice in your life, are you looking for things to resist, to butt up against reality? I don't like this. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it is. It would be possible if you just relax with what is, instead of trying to resist it all the time, trying to find reasons why it's wrong, why you don't like it, why it doesn't fit for you. surrendering into the experience. You shouldn't do things you hate to do by any means. Eh? Like sometimes if you just don't like something, if it's a limiting belief, doing those things you don't really like to do, it builds resiliency. You find yourself stepping into things that you didn't expect because you learn that you can do things you don't like to do and maybe see them be successful at them, thrive in them. whole experience can just start from like staying in the in pose, not fidgeting, not coming out of it if it doesn't feel the way you want it to feel. The moment
movement, you want to come out of a yoga asana, the posture, the moment that that work actually begins with yoga to be present. And relax into it. A few more breaths here. Bring your right hand back out in front of you, stabilize that, press your palm out of the mat, and then slowly roll off the left shoulder. No rushing. And really take your time here as you come out. Arms back beside the body. Just take a belly shavasana for a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Set up on the right side for the shoulder roll. So extending the right arm out beside you. Roll onto your right side, right hip over the left. Then options again, keeping, keeping that left palm on the floor here for support. If you want to stay here, that's an option. Just finding that spot option to put the left foot flat on the ground behind the right knee option to bring the left hand behind the back to deepen that. And again, if you want to cactus that right arm, you do you, friend. If that feels good on your shoulder, then go for it. For me, it does not. Getting beyond your edge, getting to a place where there's like excruciating pain, pinching, suffering, that's not the edge, okay? That's well beyond it. Discomfort. I feel discomfort. I definitely feel some discomfort in the shoulder, and that's okay. It's really good to open it up. But finding your edge. If you feel nothing with the arm straight, try bending the elbow a little bit. See if it brings you a little bit more of the sensations. You want to feel your body experiencing something happening. You're breathing through it. Can you relax into the pulse? What can you get out of the way? What can you remove from the experience that's going to let you be more present? Maybe five more breaths. Breathe in, breathe out, take that left hand back out in front of you to support as you roll off the right shoulder. Take your feet as wide as your mat, nice and wide this time. We're going to move into crocodile pose. This is the last one on our belly here. Stack the hands with your elbows bent out. So like elbows at the corners of the mat, arms parallel, forearms parallel to the top of the mat. Just rest your forehead on your stacked hands. Keep 
breathing here. I'm going to pop for belly in a moment. We're going to do some more hips. Just feel your shoulders. Breathe in. Breathe out. A couple more here. Move. And two, we're going to move into caterpillar. So however you get there, coming onto your hands and knees, walk your knees up a bit, cross the ankles, and sit down with your legs out in front of you. Caterpillar is seated forward bent, same thing. We're going to hold it a bit longer, so like a little bit different names for the same poses. Instead of grabbing your feet and really pulling yourself into the forward fold, more of just like a gentle expression, let the forearms rest on either side of your legs. Really rounding forward through the neck and the back, kind of letting that hang out. And again, you might be able to get yourself deeper, but don't like pull. It's not about muscles in the arms pulling you there. It's more of a melting into it. And make sure you've got the same kind of thing, the, the bum cheeks, the sit bones pulled out behind you. Plug your femur bones into your hip sockets. And from there, just allowing the upper body to round forward. Really get a big stretch through the neck and the thoracic spine. Feel that as you tuck the chin. Big stretch between the shoulder blades. for a couple of minutes really just check in as you've been here for a little while after five or six breaths or so you might find you can melt the chest a bit closer to the thighs or the knees touch the edge breathe through it breathe into it It's there for you, mentally, those rocks, those points of resistance, distractions, things you think you have to focus on that are important in your life that you have to do later, that you did yesterday. Distractions from this moment, from true restoration being able to take place. Remove the rocks, get those blockages out of the way. Acknowledge them. It's not about ignoring them. It's definitely not about getting frustrated when they try to pop into your consciousness, but the awareness is the opportunity to shift to something else. Feel the stretch in the neck and spine. Feel the breath. Check in with your edge. Can you go any deeper? Maybe you don't need to. Maybe you're there already. Take five more breaths.
take a breath in, empty it out. Slowly walk your hands back up to sit. Take a quick staff pose here, palms on either side of the hips, sitting tall, shoulders back, like lifting to the chest and through the crown of the head. There may be a lot of muscle engagement in this. Just sitting tall, Tadasana. Breathe in. Breathe out. We'll move into double pigeon. Put the left leg on top to start. So I think this is called square pose in the end. Just keep track, they like renamed them, like all the, not renamed, but all the poses I've studied, they like have different names for each practice. Getting the knees and ankles stacked on each other, okay? So what double pigeon is not is just sitting cross-legged with your foot on the inside of your thigh or your inside of your knee, okay? This is not gonna give you the stretch. You need to stack the joints. This might, if this is like outrageously too tight for you, you can straighten out that bottom leg, okay? This is an option to do that. And if you can take the full expression, get into it. And it might be really tight to start. I know for me, I always like have said several times this week, this pose is one of the biggest ones for me where I can notice a difference in my edge moving with each breath. So sitting tall to begin. Keep the feet flexed, okay? So just don't let the feet go limp. You want to keep some activation in the legs. Not really activating muscles as much as keeping the tension in the legs. If you have the mobility, hands are in front of you. Slowly checking in with where your edge is, breath by breath. Let the head round forward. into it. Check in if there's anywhere else you can relax into. If your edge has allowed you to go deeper, melt into it. If there's tightness and your breath at those places. Five more breaths. Breathe in, breathe out, slowly, slowly walk yourself back up to sit. Now, take the knees stacked now, so bringing the heels kind of closer to the bum cheeks, knees stacked for shoelace pose.
the knees more stacked on top of each other. You can use your hands to guide yourself into that. Go for it. Rest on top of that left thigh. breaths, really intentional, really focused on the breathing, not forcing, not labored, not purposeful. There's five more here. Take a breath in, and take a breath out. Slowly come back up to sit. Extend both legs out in front of you, staff pose, just for a few breaths. Take your time, please, friend, okay? Don't rush it out of these poses. Feel the sensations that you just generated. Sitting tall, hands by your hips. Breathe in, breathe out, one more, and we'll move into square pose, double pigeon on the left, left, sorry, right leg, right leg on top, on the right, left leg on the bottom. Getting the ankles and the knees stacked, and again, if you need to, straighten out the left leg for this, if that gives you access to getting the knee underneath the ankle, or even the ankle just beyond the knee, even if you have the mobility for it. Flexed feet, sit bones back out of the way. Wherever you are, if this is the pose for you, sitting tall, this is the pose, it's perfect. You can even just let the head round forward here. Slowly start to walk the hands out in front of you. Breath by breath, finding your edge. Just letting yourself be in stillness. Moving a little deeper as your edge moves is different than fidgeting around in the pose, yeah?
check if you can go any deeper with five more breaths. Back out. One more. Slowly walk the hands back up. Shoelace. Take the ankles and draw them back towards opposite hips. Stacking the knees. Force it, but get there at the edge and then lean forward into it. Feet stay flexed. Let your head go. Five more breaths. Take one more here. And slowly come back up. Legs out in front of you. Take your time. Okay, please take your time. Don't rush. Transition out. Sitting tall. Staff pose just for a few breaths again. Pressing through the palms lightly. Shoulders back. Chest crown of the head lift up. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. And now slowly come down onto your back. Both of your knees a squeeze. Plant your feet on the mat. A little further away than usual for supine twist. Just do that if a different area of the body will engage. Drop your knees over to the right side. Both knees for supine twist. Variation here. Snore and beastie. Let go of any tension. No muscles. Just relax into it. Breathe into it.
Hmm. Two more breaths here. Take a full inhale. A full exhale. Bring your knees back up towards the ceiling. Shift your hips to the right a few centimeters and then drop the knees over to the left. And gaze over to your right shoulder. Sorry, not sorry for the Rottweiler snoring under the microphone there. Definitely not going to get him to stop. Five more breaths. Knees back to center. The option to finish, I'm going to finish in Supta Baddha Konasana today. If you want to take Shavasana, just like go into whatever fits, or if you like start in Supta and want to move into Shavasana after a little bit, but I'm just going to land right here. You can take one hand on your belly or one and one on your heart, or you can have like your arms cactus or up over your head. Last pose, really allowing stillness and restoration in the body. Just like hear the relaxed Rottweiler snores and just tap into that kind of energy. Maybe not sleeping, but deep rest. in your way, what rocks are in your path, in your shoe, in your mind, keep you from moving forward on that journey just with a state of restoration, ease, flow.
a deep breath in. Open your mouth, let it go. <sighs> Full body stretch, arms up over the head, touch your toes, lengthen your legs. And bring yourself up to a seated position. Keep the eyes closed, sitting tall. Hands together at the center of your chest. Take a deep breath in. Open your mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Thumbs into your forehead center. And the stillness in me acknowledges the stillness in you. We finish our practice together with a bow. Thank you. Ha, ah, oh my God, I feel so zen right now. So now go do a power practice if you want some extra fire. This is the time to do it. Yin first, then yang. That's the kind of the prescription, the yoga prescription. So um, please let me know how you enjoyed that, okay? If you didn't, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down. I'll take whatever you got. And just consider if you didn't enjoy it, if it was something that I did, let me know. I really am open to the feedback. And if it's just because you're one of those like agitated people that never sit still, I acknowledge you for being here and actually hearing me say this because that means you made it all the way through the class and maybe you got that rock out of the way and we can do this again, okay? There will be a 75-minute... Uh, yin next Saturday and then a 90 minute one the one after that which will be the longest yin class that I have taught so um, I'm looking forward to it please hit the thumbs up please comment please subscribe if you haven't already help this channel keep growing so we can get more people onto their yoga mats and into a mindfulness practice keep moving your body keep nourishing your body and um, have an awesome rest of your day I'll see you really soon